second year, Elisa, Siobhan, and I are going to show you how to do an IV push. Now we're going to look at the physician's order sheet. And you can see this is the order sheet. The name is Alice Nyman, ID number, date of birth 2-14-41, allergies. We're going to look um, for morphine, sulfate, and lorazepam because those are the drugs we are going to give IV push. And we have that, morphine sulfate, 2 to 6 milligrams, IV push every 1 to 2 hours, PRN. And we've got lorazepam, Ativan, 0 0.5 one milligram, to 1 milligram every 1 to 2 hours, IV, PRN. So we have that. That is correct. We are going to take our MAR now and compare it. And we would put it side by side. So we have our morphine sulfate, dose 2 to 6 milligrams, IV push, PRN every 1 to 2 hours, Ativan. 0 0.5 to 1 milligram IV push PR in every 1 to 2 hours. So we have our MAR and we have our order sheet. Now we're going to go to our drug book. Here's our IV drug book. Now I'm going to open it. So we found lorazepam and now we're going to look and see if this drug needs to be diluted. And of course when you're looking up a drug you can look up everything, your side effects, what it's used for, all those good things. But right now we're just looking at um, what we're going to do as far as the IV push. So the dilution, it says here, dilute immediately before use with an equal volume, and it says sterile water, D5W, or normal saline. So Ativan happens to be a drug that has to be diluted one to one. So if you're going to give 0.5 milligrams of the drug, you're going to have to dilute it with 0.5 of saline. Okay. Um, we're going to look now at the rate of administration. And the rate of administration here, it says each two milligrams or fraction thereof over one to five minutes. So you're going to have to make a judgment regarding your patient, patient um, as to how fast you're going to give this. Um, since this is a video, we'll do it over one minute for time's sake. But you're going to look at that. And all drugs have a rate of administration. Now I'm going to go over to morphine. So now we're at morphine sulfate, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look and see um, the dilution. Does it need to be diluted? It says may be given undiluted, however, further dilution with 5 mils of sterile water, normal saline for injection or other IV solutions. So it can be given undiluted, and we are going to give it undiluted. Almost all drugs now are not diluted. There are only certain ones, and Ativan happen to be one that has to be diluted, so we're going to show you how to do that. But morphine, we're not going to give diluted. And then we're going to go over to the rate of administration, and you can see the rate of administration here. 15 milligrams, or a fraction thereof, over 4 to 5 minutes. So we have to give morphine over 4 to 5 minutes. Um, and all drugs have a rate of administration. You always want to look that up. So now we're going to gather our supplies, and I've gathered supplies. Um, you always want to use some kind of barrier, and we're going to use this tray here as our clean barrier. What I have on the tray, I have two flushes, normal saline flushes, and you, you're going to want to look at that and make sure that it does say sodium chloride. You don't want to accidentally pick up something like potassium. And you're going to look at that with your um, MAR and make sure it's correct. And then I've also got the 0.9% sodium chloride. And just so you know, that is also called normal saline. It's the same thing. And we're going to make sure that we have that, that it's correct. It is sodium chloride. Then we've got a couple of small syringes that we're going to put our Ativan in one and our um, saline in the other. I've got smart tips that we're going to use, alcohol swabs, and I've got medication um, labels because we're going to label our medication. The only thing I do not have sitting on the tray right this second is the Ativan, and I will be getting that out of the Pixis. So I've set up my syringes now. I've got my small syringes with my smart tips, and you know the smart tips are um, not needles. Okay, I did go to the Pixis and I got my lorazepam and I did check it against my MAR at the Pixis. Um, and this is a 2 milligram per, per meal, so we're going to have to uh, waste and we'll have to draw all of it up 
in the syringe. We'll have to take it over to a waste basket with another RN and waste it in the waste basket till we have the right amount that we want because we're going to pull 0.5, um, 0.5 milligrams. Well, it's 0.5 mils that we're pulling, but we're, we're giving 0.5. And then we're going to have to give the same amount of saline, 0.5 mils. Okay? So I'm going to show you how to take care of your flushes here. You want to open them up outside of the room. You want to push on the barrel here to get the air out or pop it. I, it might not pop, but it's just to get the air out. What I do is I take the lid off. I twist the barrel so that all that air comes out and it's ready to go and it doesn't fly all over the room. Okay, and we're going to get these ready outside the room so that when you go in you're not fooling around with your paper. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to twist the barrel and we're going to get the air out and it's ready to go. Okay, those are ready to go on our clean surface. Um, I'm going to scrub my saline and my Ativan. So I'm going to, they're going to be scrubbed for 15 seconds. For the sake of video, we'll say it's been 15 seconds. And we'll do the other one for 15 seconds. And then they're ready to go. I usually pull up my um, saline first, so I'm going to get some air here, a little bit more. I'm going to put in my smart tip bring it up. I'm going to pull back to get, we only want a half, so I just pull out a little bit more, go to the half, pull that out, put my smart tip back on. If I have a bubble in there, I'm going to hit it with a pen, and that usually gets the bubble out, and that's ready to go. And now I'm going to put this back in my boat, and I'm going to get my air. I'm trying to think while I'm talking here. Half. I'm going to put in a half, bring it back up. Well, actually, in this case, I'm going to pull it all out because remember, this is a narcotic. So I have to pull all the drug out of here. Um, so I could have put a little bit more air in. And we'll say it's all out. It's all out. Now I'm going to take this over to the waste basket. I'm going to push out what I don't need. I only need a half a cc and the other RN is with me. We're going to say we wasted it. I'm going to put that smart tip back on. Okay, So that's ready to go. Now I'm going to make room in my saline. I'm going to make room for my drug. So then I pull a little bit more than what I need. And I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to leave that one on. Sorry about that. You're going to leave that smart tip on. Pull that off. And this smart tip is going to go right in there. It's really hard for me to see this. There we go. See how it, you can press it right in and it's ready to go. And I'm going to push the drug in, take that out. I don't have to recap that one because I'm not going to use that. Okay, so now I'm going to label my syringe. And I have lorazepam, one milligram, because 0.5 mils is one milligram of lorazepam. And then I've got 0.5 mils of normal saline. Okay. All right, and I'm going to label this, and I'm going to make sure I don't cover up my increment so I can see what I'm doing and it's ready to go. So because we're going into the room and as we said before we're going to be giving Ativan and morphine we're gonna go ahead and get that drug ready too so that when we go in the room we're not going in and out and in and out we want to be uh, efficient. So here's our morphine sulfate it's two milligrams per one mil I went to the Pixis and got this out. We don't have to waste. That's the dosage we want. We checked it with the MAR and it is correct. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put it in this little, uh, they call it a um, carpet jet. And so we're going to um, put that in. We're going to slide it in. And when you slide it in, you're going to 
start screwing this little part here, screwing it up inside. There's, a, there's actually a screw that's in there that it attaches to. You're going to twist this around, make sure it's tight and everything's in. All right, so these uh, Tubexes, this part here, the medication is called a Tubex, and this is the Carpujet. The Tubexes come with air in them, so we're going to have to get that air out. And so we're going to push up, and sometimes you can do it with the lid on, and it works fine. Other times you have to loosen the lid, it just depends. So this one I'm going to have to loosen the lid a little bit, push that air out, and you want to make sure you don't get rid of the drug so that we're, we're now at one mil and we're ready to go. Okay. So we have that ready to go. So I've now come into the patient's room. I've identified the patient. I've washed my hands and put gloves on. I'm now going to go over and look and see what the site looks like. This patient has a triple lumen subclavian site, okay? A central line. A central line, this this catheter is threaded all the way into the superior vena cava, okay? And um, I'm going, I want to talk about these different lines. What, um, what this amounts to is there's one long catheter, and on this catheter there are three different holes where whatever you're putting in goes out into the bloodstream. So what that means is that you can use for instance, three different drugs could be going into these three different lines at the same time, and they don't mix, okay? Um, on this lumen, you will see something called proximal, distal, mi middle is what that means. And so what that has to do is that catheter that's threaded in where those different holes are, that really is telling us where it is. So the, the proximal is closest to the insertion site, that hole. The distal is the furthest away from the insertion site, and the middle is in the middle, just so that you're aware of how that works. We have these green caps on here. They're called Kuros caps, also called frogs. They just screw on to the positive pressure valve, and inside these, is, it contains alcohol. If you see a Kuros cap on like this, and you're coming in to do an IV push, when you take this cap off, you do not have to scrub the hub the first time because it's been sitting in alcohol for a, very, for a long time. And then when you're done uh, giving your IV push, you need to put a new Kuros cap on here. Now I'm going to take this Kuros cap off for a second to show you this positive pressure valve. This is called a positive pressure valve. Um, the reason these are used now really is so that we don't have to have these clamps. But I notice at the hospital and everywhere we still do have these clamps. It used to be we didn't have these positive pressure valves. We just had a cap on the end and we'd have to make sure this was clamped every time so that we didn't have any problem with um, intralumal blood getting in there. So what these are used for it creates a positive pressure and prevents backflow of blood into the catheter to help prevent intraluminal thrombus formation or catheter-related thrombus. That's what these are used for so that you know. If you do have a clamp on here, I'd still clamp it and unclamp it um, because it's just another safety uh, check, okay? But you have to make sure you unclamp it when you're, when you're giving, doing an IV push. So now I'm going to give my IV push. I've got all my supplies on my tray over here. Um, we're going to start with our saline flush. I'm going to use this particular one. I'm going to unclamp it. I'm going to take off the Kuros cap because we're not going to reuse that at all. I'm going to take off this. I've already gotten my saline flushes ready. Let's twist it on. And this is a central line, so we have to flush with five to ten cc's so I'm going to flush and everything seems to be working fine we want to make sure the IV is okay and there's no pain okay so I did that I am now going to scrub now I do have to scrub in between my next um, to give my medication so I'm going to scrub the hub 
for 15 seconds. And for the sake of video, I won't take the whole 15 seconds, but you will scrub for 15 seconds. I'm going to be giving my Ativan, and so now I'm going to put that on. And you'll notice you're using whatever syringe size you need for the amount of medication you have. So I have one mil total here. I'm going to push it over one minute, so I'm going to get it down to 0.25 every, 0.25 cc's every 15 seconds, okay? So I'm going to look at my watch. I'm go first, I'm going, to, I'm going to push the first 0 0.25. I'm going to wait for 15 seconds and look at my watch. And when it's been 15 seconds, I'm going to push another 0.25. And I'm going to look at my watch and wait 15 seconds. And I'm going to continue to do that until the drug is in, which will take me one minute. Okay, so I'm not going to take that much time right now because it will take too long. But you're going to keep doing this, and we'll just say this is my last. I'm going to take that off. And now I'm going to have to scrub again. So I've got my alcohol swab. And it's a new alcohol swab every time. I'm going to scrub the hub for 15 seconds. And you know, you can have a trash a trash right next to you and throw this in the trash. You can lay it on the side here. Whatever works um, for your trash. And now I'm going to have to go at the same rate as I just did with my saline flush. So I was going 0.25 every 15 seconds. So I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm going to go 0.25 and I'm going to wait 15 seconds. And the reason we go at the same rate is because that drug is in the line. And so we're going to go at the same rate with the saline um, for the first two mils. Now, in this case, we only gave a mil, so we're going to do it for the fi every 15 seconds for the one minute like we did before and keep going. And however much is we've put in, now we're going to make sure that we flush at the end after we've done our one minute. We are going to continue to flush with however much more we need, which would be 5 to 10 cc's. So you're going to have to decide if you're going to give 5 to 10. If your patient is on fluid restriction, you might only give 5. If not, you might give 10. So now I'm going to have to get a new Kuros cap. And I'm going to put a new Kuros cap on the end of this positive pressure valve and in this case I would probably go ahead and just clamp it again and we're good to go. We want to make sure our patient is okay. All right, We've given the Ativan so now we're going to give the morphine sulfate. We've done our checks, we've ID'd our patient, we made sure we have the right drug and you know you have to always remember your six rights and your three checks, always. Um, we have a running IV here you can see the line. It's going at a one. It's normal saline running at 100 mils an hour. And if you're going to give, if you're going to push a drug with a running IV, you have to make sure it's compatible for one thing, and that's with your drug book. You'll have to look in your drug book, make sure that normal saline is compatible with morphine, which it is. Then we also want it to be going at about 75 to 100 an hour at least, so that it will infuse at a, a decent rate. Okay, So this has a Kuros cap. We're going to take that off. We're going to take this off, the lid to the Tubex. We're going to attach our Tubex. We're going to look at our increments. And in this case, morphine has to be given over four to five minutes. We're going to pick five. And we've got one mil of solution. So we're going to give 0.2 mils I'm going to push 0.2, and then I'm going to wait for one whole minute. I'm going to look at my watch and wait for one whole minute, and then push the next 0.2. And I'm not going to wait the whole minute right now, but you're going to just continue to do that for over the five minutes, and it will take five minutes for this to go in. Okay, and then we'll say that it's, and you know, while you're waiting, it's the the fluid is flushing in and getting the medicine in. So we'll say that we're at the end and that we've pushed it in. I'm going to take this off. 
and we're going to get a new Kuros cap. Put a new Kuros cap on there. And the IV is going to continue to run, and that's all we have to do with a running IV. Okay, now I'm going to show you one more procedure that we do when we're pushing, for instance, morphine. Um, morphine is a little irritating to the veins. Now, the newest and latest evidence-based practice does not want us to um, dilute really any meds unless they're required to be diluted, like Ativan. So we have something called the back-to-back. -back. And let's say we're going to give the morphine in an INT. This is, um, these used to be called saline locks. Basically, they're not attached to anything. The IV's here. There's this extension tubing um, that we're going to use. What I'm going to do, because morphine is irritating, I'm going to scrub the hub here for 15 seconds. And I'm going to attach saline. Oh, well, okay. Now, I could not use that. If I did that, I have to start all over. So let's say I got a new one, and I'm scrubbing again, and I'm going to start all over, and I'm going to put this on. Okay. And this is ready to go. I'm just going to set this here right now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub the other hub that's closest to the insertion site for 15 seconds, okay? And I'm going to take my morphine and I'm going to attach it here. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> this is a fake arm, so it's a little harder to attach. All right, so what we have is we have our morphine here and we've got our saline here. All right, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to unclamp this, and I'm going to flush the site. Um, this is a peripheral IV, so that means 2 to 3 cc's. So I'm going to push 2 to 3, and I'm just going to do a couple here. All right, and that's ready to go. Now I'm going to set that down here, and I'm going to... Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push 0.2 of the morphine, and I have to look at my increments. I'm going to push 0.2. And then after I push the point to, I'm going to push one cc of the saline. And I'm just going to wait for that whole minute like we talked about. Because as we said, morphine takes five minutes, four to five minutes. Then I'm going to, after that minute, I'm going to push two more of the morphine. Go back to my saline, push one mil. And wait a whole minute. And you're going to continue to do that for the five minutes. And at the very end, you're going to make sure that you push your two to three cc's at the very end and you're done okay now I'm going to take everything off and I'm going to put it, uh, um, well this doesn't have a Kuros cap and I'll clamp that again and you're ready to go the reason we do this as I said is because the, mor the morphine can be very irritating so by pushing a little bit and giving a little bit of saline really helps um, it not be so painful for the patient. So you will have noticed that you saw air bubbles going in here while I was pushing and that's because this is a complete fake arm and we can't help but get air in here. It, it won't do it correctly. So I just want you to be aware of that. We would not be pushing air. Also, I hope that this video will help you to, uh, you know, study or uh, practice and remember how to do these different different techniques.